Hello everyone. If you're watching this video, that means you already did your digital sketchbook and you already picked color schemes and you already chose uh, landscapes to work with and you know what a foreground, middle ground, and background is. And um, you already know the color schemes and you already know how to color mix and you saw that PowerPoint. So we're going to go ahead and start. So the supplies you're going to need. At home, you have more than three colors of watercolor. Here at school, we only have three because we want you to be using the primary to mix your own colors. At home, you have extra colors. Please don't cheat. Only use the ones we gave you. So you're going to be using your watercolors. You're going to need a cup of water and the brush that your kit came with. And you're going to need your watercolor paper. You have a sheet this big for watercolor. And if you remember from the presentation, we're doing four tiny little paintings. So I cut it right in half. And then I cut those in half. And I ended up with four little pieces. So you're going to have four little pieces for your paintings. And that's what you're going to do. So, you have already picked all your stuff. So, you went into your digital sketchbook that you turned in and you looked at, hopefully, you looked at your project sheet and you know the vocab we're working with, you know the different concepts we're working with, and you know the color schemes. So, you chose uh, four different color schemes. And remember, these are just examples. There's all kinds of different combinations these could go through. And you also looked at uh, different color com uh, compositions, I'm sorry four landscapes and you went ahead and picked four of these in the process as you're building if you end up changing them it's okay but it does have to be a good uh composition it can't just be a random you know if you chose an s curve and you want to change it to circular or you want to change it to a balanced one then you can but you just can't say i decided to do a flower instead because we are working with compositions and we are working with having our uh, foreground, middle ground, and background, and we are working with color schemes. So that's what we're learning. So the first thing I want to tell you is this is, um, I chose the, uh, this composition right here, and it's called the Steel Yard. That's the composition that I picked. And let me zoom in a little bit for you. So here's what I drew. And when you do watercolor, you got to draw really, really light with your pencil. So I hope you can see this. So I drew a little tent, and then I drew uh, just a basic background of just trees and then I drew a tree in the foreground so my trees in the foreground my little tents in the middle ground and my background is this line of trees and the sky so the first thing I'm going to show you is that I picked an analogous color scheme to go with this one so I have analogous so I'm going to use yellow green green blue green and blue so I'm going to start with blue when you paint your mini landscapes you need to do them in a process so the first thing I'm going to do is paint my background and my land so I can put stuff on top of it so I am going to just grab wa clean water and I'm going to go across the whole thing. And that includes the, um, the sky and everything, the trees, just everything that I want the sky. I'm going to put a nice little wet wash. I'm going to grab a little bit of blue paint and I'm just going to basically touch my paper. Just touch it very lightly. And wherever I don't touch, those are my clouds. Wherever I do touch, then that's the sky. And that's how you do a basic sky and watercolor. That's it. You barely touch your brush, and when it hits the water, it just spreads. So that's a basic background. This is all going to be grassy land. And since I'm doing my analogous color scheme, I'm going to go ahead and go with just basic green. Here's the other thing I want to tell you. I have my paint in this little mixing palette that I made myself. It's just a piece of Tupperware because I don't have a palette. But it's just I took them out, and I put them in here with a little bit of water so I have my palette. You never want to paint straight out of the, your wells. It's really bad. You get really bright color and you don't get all the effects. So again, do not grab paint from here and start painting right away. That's a really bad idea. You need to take out your paint and then you need to put it on a surface. Keep going. Notice I didn't get more water. I just used the water inside the brush so that I can get nice pigment out. So please do not paint straight out of these. Paint outside of them. Get the paint out so that you can get real nice color. So I'm going to go with green. And since we are color mixing, I'm going to grab a little bit of my blue and I'm going to put it in my yellow. Remember, you always start mixing with a lighter color first and then you put the dark into it a little bit at a time. Because if I try to put yellow into my blue, it's going to take tons and tons of yellow to make that green. So always mix with your light color first and you add a little bit of your more intense color. I'm sorry, less intense color. So I'm going to do that. This time I'm not going to put water in it because I want the color to be a little bit bolder. And now that I have it in there, I'm just going to grab a little bit of water and I'm going to move it around. Now, if you want your colors a little bit darker, you can always grab more paint 
and start adding a little more layers, but that's what you're supposed to do. Now this painting, I should not touch it at all until it's completely dry. You always paint your backgrounds and your any kind of things that are going to overlap. You paint backgrounds and any kind of overlapping areas first. Then um, when it dries, you add your second layers. So I have this other one that I painted. And it's an S-curve composition. And it has a sky. And it has a land and it has a big road. And my colors right here. Give me just a second. Okay, so the S-curve... Here's my color scheme. I chose cool and I'm going to use yellow green on the leaves and stuff that go on my trees. I'm going to use green on my grass and trees and then I'm going to use a shade of green. I'm going to do green with a little bit of black in it, a shade to kind of get my tree trunks. Then I'm going to use the blue green for these plants that are in the foreground and I'm going to use blue for the sky and I use blue violet for this road. And that's what I like. Um, it was a tint because I added tons of water so it became a light blue violet so it ended up looking brownish so I'm really happy with that and then violet I added in the lower end of the sky so you see this is dry I can add paint to here now and have a pretty good painting so I did my backgrounds first now I'm going to go with my middle ground which is this line of trees the second line of trees so for my second line of trees I chose that I was going to do um sorry so just basic green and I have a little bit of black I'm going to take a tiny, tiny bit of black because all I need is just a dot of black. Dot, black goes a really long way. It's a really strong color. So I'm going to grab my blue-green. So I'm going to go right here, some blue-green. I'm going to add a little black to it to make it a little bit darker. And I don't want to be real bold with color yet because this is just my back layer. So I'm going to just add... Sorry. The illusion of trees back here... And I know they're not looking great yet, but they're going to be in the background, so you should be okay. But I couldn't have done this if my sky was still wet. So I'm going to add those real quick. So I went ahead and added a few layers of those with my tint of blue-green. That means I added, a, I'm sorry, with my shade of blue-green, that means I added a little bit of black to it. And now I'm going to let that completely dry, and I'm going to start working on my next area of the tree, which is our middle ground. Now this is a shade of green, which means I made green by mixing yellow with a little blue in it and then black. But I'm going to start right here with my tree that's in the middle ground. And I'm going to leave little gaps in there on purpose and I'm not going to paint it solid. So I can see that and then my second layer will kind of take care of it and then I'll have a really nice illusion with my tree. So this tree I'm going to take a little bit more time than my other trees. And the way I'm getting these really thin lines is I press hard on my brush, then I start letting go of my brush as I move up. Remember that trees need overlapping for them to look real good. If you don't overlap, then they're not going to look great. And I'm actually going to stop working on this tree to make the video go a little bit faster. I'm going to start grabbing some of my color here. I'm going to add a little water to make it a little bit thinner. Get a little drop shadows in it. Actually, there was too much water, so I'm just going to lift it up. I'm going to add a few little shadows in my land just to make it a little bit different. Give me just a second. So sorry, we just had a visitor, so I had to stop. Okay, so um, after this dries, you can add your tree. And then, you know, I'm going to work on my foreground with my very front. And then I would add some detail here with these flowers and kind of like these stuff in the foreground right here. But you get the point. You have to do layers. You cannot paint anything while it's wet. Every single layer has to dry. My sky had to dry. My land had to dry. My road had to dry. My main tree has to dry before I add some leaves in it. Everything has to dry before you add your next layer. So this right here is dry. Now would be the time for me to go back into my background and my back trees. When that dries, I would add my foreground tree. I would add some shadows in the greens. And then I would add my little tent. And remember, because here I was using a different one. Here's just another quick little example that I drew. And this is just a seascape. Here's a boat. Here's some water. Here's some sky. And here's other little boats. And for here, I was planning to use a warm color scheme with the yellows, the reds, and the oranges so that I could have the beautiful sunset that's happening. And it would reflect on the water. And then I would probably get my red orange and add a little bit of black to it to make it a shade and do my boats with that right there. But you see how I can do any color scheme and do any kind of composition? Right here... I did the radiating composition and it's a farmhouse, a little bit of road and all the different farmlands. 
But, you know, the pattern of the farmlands and the patterns of the smoke coming from the farmhouse in the skies will give me that uh, radiating composition. And here, I plan to use a split complementary with orange, blue, green, and blue violet. And I will use the orange for my farmhouse. And I will use the blue green for um, a lot of my lands. And I will use the blue violet for a lot of the area in my sky. So you can see I'm sticking to the comp landscape compositions that we looked at. And I'm also sticking to my color schemes. And you're going to make a total of four little paintings to turn in. This is three because the other one's in the back. But you're going to make a total of four little paintings. You're going to take one picture of all four. And each little painting that you turn in, when you take your picture, it needs to have the name of what color scheme came with it. So each one of them is going to have the name of the color scheme. I know these are wrong because I wasn't thinking right now, but each one is going to have the name. You snap one picture, and that's what you turn it into canvas. Well, I hope you guys have fun.